Why not? So I feel like I can't even date someone who has like animals. Ah, why not? Are you scared because it's like a trauma or scared no, just because you don't just... like them? Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Korea Unfiltered. Today's guest is already a staff member of the studio because she already has a job here. <laughs> she Thank has been you. hired as a staff <laughs> member beginning today. I feel so bad, but uh, I didn't give her the job. The owner of the studio did. Let's welcome our guest, Leila. Hey, hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. Welcome to the studio. <laughs> Thank and, you so uh, much for having me. Welcome to being a staff member of the studio. Well, um, we need to discuss pay. It's, I'm sorry, it's an unpaid internship. Oh, God. I'm so okay. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that happened. It's never happened before. But it's because like the last time we recorded, I was completely out of focus. Okay. I'm still fighting with my microphone, y'all. What is going on? I'm always too close to the microphone. Um, but would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So, hi, everyone. My name is Leila. I am a Central African American. Mm -hmm. So prior to coming to Korea, I would say I spent half of my life in the Central African Republic mm -hmm. and the other half in Boston in America. Not Boston. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> when did you move from Central Africa to go to America? Um, it was 2005. Oh, I moved from Kenya to America 2006. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, look, look at, at us, 2000, <laughs> escaping Africa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to be honest, I want to go back. Not going to lie. <laughs> okay, it took me 10 years to actually go back. How long really? did you wait? Yeah. For me, it was every two years we would go back. Oh, okay. Was it two bad. years? Yeah, I think it was every two years or it was a little longer before because we weren't exactly rich in America. Like okay. life in America was hard for mm -hmm. us. I don't know about your family, but it might be a little bit more than two years or two years because two we years. tried to go back like every two years. OK, for you, 10 years is crazy. 10 years. Well, the thing is, my parents just sent us to America to study. That's how oh, it so started. You went separate. Yes. So oh, we were not okay. living together it was just like one child at a time yeah so we started just living in boston together yeah in the same apartment and then oh. one person would come every year and that's basically how it was oh wow yeah. and how was that for you you know what when you live a very comfortable life yeah. where people cook for you take care of you and stuff Girl. and then you get to america and all of a sudden you have to cook for yourself and then Girl. <laughs> yeah no it was it was hard yeah oh, I adulting bet. was um interesting how old were you when you moved i was seven, 16. Oh, 16 going on 17. Kid. Okay, yeah. so you were still a kid. Yeah, I was. Do you ever have like regrets of moving to America? Or oh, no, 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 really? no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the truth is I wanted to go to France at first oh, okay. because usually when people graduate from the school where I was, yeah. you go to France and you study. So I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, oh, oh, and snap. then okay. my dad was like, well, I'm going to send you to America because, you know, you had this dream and stuff. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to go. Yeah. But it's your dad, so you don't have a choice. It's your African dad. Let's exactly. Start there. Yeah. So at first I was against it, but now looking back yeah. it was the best decision because being in america for 15 years really shaped me into the person that i am mm -hmm, today mm -hmm. so i'm very grateful yeah do you think you would have had those opportunities if you stayed in central africa? oh no 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 <laughs> no shade but no <laughs> <laughs> have you do you have like family that you quote unquote send money back to in central africa uh no oh, damn i was gonna i was gonna ask what do you think i mean if that? i if i if i do <laughs> yeah it is out of the goodness of my heart. Oh, okay. It's not like a necessity. Oh, it's like just you want to. Exactly. Okay, because I was going to ask you, like, what do you think about people who are back home, back home meaning Africa, mm -hmm. for me, Kenya, for you, Central Africa, who think that once you move to America, you're automatically, like, rich? Yeah, I mean, we, we can't really fight that because the perception is there to stay. It is. And... Yeah. And the truth is, it's hard. Yeah. It is hard. Like, my mom is right now, like, she went back to visit. Okay. And she calls me and she's like, people are suffering. So it is Bro. It is hard to find a job. It is hard to sustain yourself and your family. So yeah. I do understand why people would rely on, quote unquote, us the ones to who help. Went outside, yeah. Yes. But the thing is, if you give the person the fish, but you don't teach them how to fish, that's going to be an issue. So yeah. I'm sending money. Yeah if it's going to help you get something like i have an uncle for example mm -hmm. he's a teacher mm -hmm. and they don't pay teacher well so yeah. he's like hey Leila, there is this um thing that i want to learn mm -hmm. but it's going to cost money mm -hmm. so he sent me the syllabus and everything oh, wow. okay. and he said you know this is how much it's going to cost yeah would you be willing to help me I'm out like, absolutely yeah. i told my mom i yeah. will do that in a heartbeat yeah because there's evidence that he's using it for something else exactly it's not just like oh you're rich send me money exactly yeah i have like some uh-oh 
I'm not gonna call you out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my tongue right now. <laughs> I think as as a Kenyan mm-hmm. in Kenya, there's this perception of when Kenyans leave and they go overseas, we say maju like oh walienda maju is like they went overseas, right? Mm-hmm. They have this perception of oh my god, they're rich, they're living life, and like people don't realize it's so hard living in America. Yeah. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Like I remember my parents like started from like nothing. Oh. and made something out of them not even made something out of them made something out of their children mm-hmm. like my brother is a whole aerospace engineer oh excuse uh, me yes how old is your brother girl <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> he's he's probably around your age but I, I feel like that's amazing but people i think back home need to realize that it's hard everywhere you go we also are part of the problem because mm-hmm. on social media uh, we paint a lifestyle that this, some of us yeah. do not have yeah so obviously the person's gonna think you're rich if yeah. you're posting all of those things so nobody posts their problems exactly i never post my <laughs> actually i posted some of my problems <laughs> <laughs> i have a whole youtube channel i post a lot of my problems but yeah people do tend to post like going traveling mm. like they're nice things that they bought but you don't see like the work behind that no you do not yeah so that's that's very true that's very true. i'm glad to hear you don't regret um the american dream no, or the american I life don't. at all I yeah don't. yeah i don't either i think some people think i do just because i'm always like i'm kenyan american and they're like oh you're kenyan and i'm like i'm also american i'm kenyan american but you know the funny thing is i actually introduce myself as central african yeah i'm only american at work <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm only american when it's benefiting me exactly <laughs> it's exactly benefiting me. Exactly. It's really messed up to say because I do have two passports. I'm obviously Kenyan yeah, and I'm American. <laughs> but the way I'll whip out my American passport, if it's helping me faster than my Kenyan passport, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm American. No, I mean, with the <laughs> yeah. Central African passport, I would need a visa to be in Korea. But with the American one... You just come in. Yes. Well, you have to get a visa. <laughs> That's true. You still have to get a visa. But it's a lot easier to come to Korea with an American passport than an African passport, I would say. Yes. And yeah. actually, I'm working on my mom coming here on vacation yeah so she doesn't have an american passport oh, yeah. she has a central african one so she needs to ask for a visa oh, and the limit is a month they don't give you more than a month and then there's this list of documents so i have to write a letter like an invitation letter that i have to notarize and that i have to ship to the country so for like her a, to sign and whatnot? for me to sign here with like a, a notary to say that this is me Leila writing this paper and everything that I put on oh there is accurate my God. and then ship the paper yeah not even like a copy like I literally have to ship the paper girl and then they want like um you know bank account like six months they want to know yes. where she's gonna stay which is crazy to and me I'm like dude and as Americans we just walk in yes we're just like hey y'all, like my brother is coming here. too but he's he's coming because <laughs> <'cause laughs> he's just walking in but as a Kenyan, like I always have people like Kenyans in my DMs asking like, oh, how do I go to Korea? And I feel like some people don't realize I'm also American. So it's a lot easier for mm-hmm. me. But if you're Kenyan, it's hard. It is. Because what, what I've heard from my Kenyan friends, I'm like, I feel for y'all. But I'm going to whip out <laughs> that American passport like there's no tomorrow. I know. So, so, yes. so grateful. Yeah, I am. I'm, Thank I'm you, very- America. <laughs> Like we have a love hate relationship with you, America, but I really appreciate you in those times. Oh, me too. Me <laughs> For too. sure. But how did you end up coming to Korea? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So Korea was a dream, first of all. Oh, how so? Y- yes. So were you one of 2005, the K-pop you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, no my, shame. I was my, one of the K-pop My story girlies. started in 2005. Yeah. So, well, actually 2006, a year after I, you know, you get to America and yeah. stuff, I'm trying to adjust, going to college and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm an introvert, so making friends was very hard. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so I would go to school, and yeah. then school is over, I'm like home yeah. on my computer, and that's when YouTube started yeah. back in the day. Th- first of all, this story is sounding very similar to is mine. Keep story? going, keep okay, going, it's sounding so very similar. You watch a Korean drama, and there's this girl who sounds so beautiful, you're yeah. like, what is this? <laughs> and then you realize it's a drama, you go back to the beginning, you watch it again, and yeah. you fall in love with Korean, the language, and then you go on Amazon there's only like one book you buy the book yep. and you start like studying Hangul and those little sentences and stuff yeah. and then fast forward 10 years later I decide to go on vacation with my brother yeah because by that point he was also into Korean dramas oh really oh wow we you got your brother into it too. girl yeah the oldest and the youngest what and so girl. we planned this trip yeah when I tell you I had a list an Excel spreadsheet everything all things you want to do yes 2015 <laughs> yeah my passport does not come on time. My brother had to leave without me. <gasps> First of all, I your brother you, left without you? Of course. I would have done the same, girl. 
oh wow <laughs> you know you know what i can't believe it was a lot of money <laughs> oh, like true. the airbnb the flight and everything was like i'm so sorry i know this is your dream and he i'm said, like gonna leave your dream for you. <laughs> i'll buy you snacks when i get there <laughs> he sent me pictures and videos every day it was like okay this is what i'm doing okay where do you want me to go i would not talk to my brother for at least a month if he left me but you know the good thing out of that yeah i cried in the shower and i told myself you know what maybe this is a sign from oh. god to say leila you need a break because at that time i was like so i quit my job oh wow okay so the trip was may i quit my job in august yeah and then i came to korea for a month and a half oh wow yes a and month I and a half is quite long time. by the way yes yeah, i just yeah. wanted break and a change yeah yes. how was that how was that break did you actually feel like it was a break or i felt like it was a break so i went to france first because i have family there mm -hmm. and then from france i came here for like a month and a half yeah and discover Korea. I came by myself and yeah. then I met someone who was like my brother's girlfriend. Long yeah. story. Uh, <laughs> and then so First she of would all, don't entice me because when somebody says long story, I'm like, no, tell us the story. But it's your brother's story. So yeah, never it's mind. my brother's we're, we're story. We're going to skip over that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's over now. So okay. I, I don't I don't want trouble. You know what? <laughs> I don't want problems. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, thanks to her. I had a good time here in Korea. Yeah. Um, I was a bit insecure back then because I was younger mm, and then go. the Korean you know, beauty, beauty standards, standards kind yeah. of affected me back then. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But still, I had a good time. Mm -hmm. And then 2016, I came back again mm -hmm. for two weeks. And this time I had this huge, oh, my God, Seoul and I are meant to be. Oh, wow. I don't know how, I don't know why, but yeah. like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to leave here. So I bought this <sighs> ring right here. It was like okay. a promise ring. You know, like those promise ring that the couples do. I'm like, okay, this you is going for me and Korea. It's for me, myself, and uh -huh. I. <laughs> and then yeah. that was the decision I made in 2016. Yeah. And then life went by, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. 2019, I was like, okay, we're doing this. So I prepared myself for like a year and a half. Yeah. And then I moved COVID, August 2020. You moved during the COVID? Yeah. Oh, my mom was like besides herself. I'm surprised they let you leave, even though you were an adult. My but. mom was like, I had to convince her. Oh, I Literally, bet. Yes. Which I do have to say, from me who lived in Korea at the time, Korea looked safer than America. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they were handling it better in Korea than they were in America. It seems like it. Yeah. So I feel like your parents should have been like, yeah, 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 go, go, go. Oh, my dad was like, go, yeah, go, 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 have fun. <laughs> you know, this is your dream. You yeah. don't have a boyfriend. You don't have a family. Just yeah, nothing is tying you exactly. down. Exactly. Yeah. My mom was like, oh, no. Like, you've built a life for yourself. You're going to throw that out to just, what, chase a dream. And then she was like, oh, they're going to be racist says? over there. They're going to be this and that. Uh, like fear mongering there's stuff. There's racist in America too. <laughs> <laughs> there's racist everywhere you go. Fear mongering yeah, me to yeah, death. But yeah. I was like, hey, because you know, it's your mom. So you can just dismiss her concern. Of course, yeah. So my thing was like, okay, I am going to show you that, that I'm can, mature yeah. and that I can handle this. So yeah. this is why I'm going. This yeah. is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. This is the plan. Mm -hmm. And this is how much money I saved. Mm -hmm. And worst, worst, worst case scenario, I just come back to America. Literally. Yeah. That's always the worst case like, scenario. That's like, it. There's always home for her. She was like, okay, you. fine. But now she's happy. Really? Like after three and a half years, she's very happy about you know everything that I've accomplished. Yeah. So. I'm like, look at you now. So now she's coming on vacation. I'm like, like, okay, <laughs> you need to come. You need to come and yeah. see what Seoul is about. To, she needs to come see. Are you nervous about um, your mom coming to Korea? Um, I just hope she likes it mm -hmm. because I, I, I love it so much. Yeah. So I hope I convey how much I love the place to her. Yes. Are you worried about Korea, Koreans perception of your mom at all? Um, like how they might treat your parents or your mom? Actually, I never thought of that. You haven't? Cause that's the first thing I thought when my dad was like, I want to go to Korea. I was like, am I ready for how people are going to be staring at my father? Because huh. I'm okay with being stared at. But my parent is different. See, now she's thinking about it. Yeah, now, now, now I'm thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Girl, these are legitimate things you have to think about. I, I, think, I think she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I think she'll... Will you be fine? That's the question. Oh, yeah. Because, you, you know, will? honestly, the whole staring thing, the whole, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't feel that. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't care about the staring now. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. But it's different if somebody talks smack about my mother or my father oh, okay. like if somebody called me like kamdungi or like hugging blah blah i don't give a crap mm. but if you say it to my parents that's a different thing you have know you know been I mean? called that oh no okay <laughs> no, I, I mean i probably have been called it online before like online people are crazy i'm um, never in my face no okay and i don't i wouldn't do anything if i was i would just be like and what 
Mm. You're not paying my bills, you know? But like, it's different if I hear about my parents, I, I feel like. Okay. And that's like my biggest fear. Huh, that, that's, a, yeah. that's an interesting point. I, yeah. I haven't thought about that, but I think I'm going to be fine. She's going to be fine. She's excited. Yeah. She wants to go shopping. She wants to do this oh, and shopping that. shopping will be fun for her, I bet. Um, like she wants all those fabrics and mm, little things. So I'm yeah. going to take her. I need to find out where I need to go. <laughs> Thank you. They have a whole fabric store there. <laughs> okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think it's going to be, no, I'm not worried. Okay, that's good. I always overthink and then the situation comes into real life and I'm like, oh, it's not even a big deal. Mm. So it's probably not going to be. It's like me deal. overthinking this whole podcast thing. Literally. It's and I'm like, Leila, bro. come on, it's just a conversation. <laughs> You're not going to die from it. Like worst case scenario, people say, okay, that was boring. But it's that's a, it. You know what? You know? It's people's life. Exactly. You know? So I'm yeah, like, yeah. fine. But you mentioned your work. What do you do in Korea? Okay. So I am an editor slash copywriter slash content writer mm -hmm. and I work at a marketing agency here in Korea yeah and it's mostly we'll do like tourism related stuff oh okay or sometimes work with like companies to promote certain product yeah or certain agencies to promote a specific service or things mm. they have but mm -hmm. we do it on social media so it's mostly uh, okay social media content okay and do you do you enjoy your job I do. <laughs> oh yeah, I got so lucky. The company out, <laughs> and this is not because they're gonna watch on me. Okay. You know, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. honestly speaking, yeah. this is the best company I could have gotten into in Korea really? after reading all those crazy the stuff. The horror you see stories. My, oh yeah, I got really lucky. Yeah, lucky, lucky. Because I feel like when most people, especially the people who come on, on my podcast, mm. a lot of them are teachers. Mm -hmm. But for you to be in a marketing, would it be a marketing agency? Yeah, it's a marketing yeah. agency. To be in a marketing agency is quite different. So like. Mm. Because most people come to Korea as teachers. Yes, I didn't want to do that. I feel that. Yeah, because I was like, you know what? This is my dream. And here's the thing. Yeah. When I left America, I wasn't like going on a field trip. I mm -hmm. was like, I am moving. This is going to be my home for the next, I don't know, 10 years, five years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to make sure that, for one, I would continue on my path, like my career path. Right. But also that I would do something that I enjoy. Because yeah. I feel like the teachers, they come here. The first years, it's like all fun. And then after that, there is this slum period mm, and I just yeah. wanted to avoid the whole thing. I'm like, I'm going to go the hard way. Mm -hmm. And that was like learning Korean at Sogang first. Oh my God. And then the looking thong? for a job. Yes. How was that? Girl, you know what? I was delusional. If I knew now what I... Okay, hold on. If I knew now what I... What? If I knew... Now, wait, if I... Wait, wait, wait. If I knew now what I knew then. No, if I knew now what I didn't know then. If I knew you? then what I know now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> wow and we're americans is. oh my wow. god no honestly <laughs> yeah. i had no korean formal training yeah. besides doing things on my own so yeah. i figured i'll go to sogang six months girl you know I've, i'll <laughs> i'll be fine girl those walk no it took me a year hard. and a half yes and it's it's really did you do the intensive course i did the regular one the, the nine to one Okay, okay. So, because I did, I, tr well, I tried to do the intensive course in Yonsei, Yonsei mm -hmm. University. I didn't learn because they were moving so fast. But you got to be careful though, because there is different type of Korean classes. Mm -hmm. At least at Sogang, they have the program that they're known for, which is basically the Korean for speaking. Mm -hmm. And then they also have another program that's more intense, which is Korean for people who want to go to school. I think that's probably what I did. Yes. Then. So yeah. if you do that, but you want to learn Korean like to speak, speak it's not going to work for you. It didn't help. Yeah. Like the the teacher spoke Korean the full the whole time. Yes. But I feel like some things needs to be explained in English. So I didn't learn anything. I just learned by myself technically. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Look at like, you. Yeah, but if you tell me to read a script, I can't. So. Okay. Yeah, like my speaking, great. Mm -hmm. My reading. Mm -mm. You see, I'm the contrary. My speaking, really? it's like I'm kind of a struggle because yeah. I write most of the time. Oh, so sure, the reading okay. and the writing is okay. Yeah. Because that's how I communicate with like my colleagues and yeah. stuff. But when it comes to having conversations, sometimes I'll be like... You hesitate. But also like, you know, limiting mindsets and... Uh, yeah. Girl, I the language know. is hard. Let's just say it exactly. like it is. Korean is not easy. It is not. It's not an easy language. Even though we are bilingual or multilingual, Korean is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, so it's already amazing that we've like learned it to where we have right now. Um, no. But you, you said, when did you come to Korea to move completely? So it was August 2020. Oh, so you, mm, you kind of knew still. Yeah, three years and six months or so. Yeah, because for me, it's six years now. Ooh, yeah, so girl. Oh my god, <laughs> girl, don't no, I feel old? Stop. <laughs> Stop. 
I used to say like just a week ago, I was like five years, and my manager is like, no, it's six years, and I'm like, oh my god, it's six years. Oh wow. Yeah, and I was just like, how do the last three years have mm. just like flown by? Like I feel that's like a good thing, right? No. Oh. Like, flown by in the sense that I'm like, what did I do the last three years? Oh. Because when COVID happened, life just, like, sped through. Mm-hmm. It's like, everything happened so fast. So I'm like, how is it that I've already been here for six years? It's like that type of feeling. Mm-hmm. But you came during COVID, so you're probably, yeah, like, enjoying yourself right now. Yes. But those three years for me just, like, sped by. It's oh, wow. freaking crazy. But back to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not about me, guys. This is not about me. Um, in the short three years, <laughs> three years, by the way, is not short. <laughs> no, it's there. not. It's three not. years is quite long. Mm-hmm. That is a three-year-old child that you would be having. I if know, you gave, right? If you gave birth, that's a whole three-year-old. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> that's my cat's age right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, but um, in those three years that you've been here, what's, mm-hmm. what are some difficulties that you think you've faced or that you have faced? I would say the language was the most difficult part because I don't think I was realistic as far as like how long it would take and how hard it would be. Mm. I thought, you know, it's language school, who cares? But it's not just that. You have to do homework and then you have to do the extra mile if you really want to improve. Mm. And when you're in a classroom full of people who are just here to have fun and you have a concrete goal and plan, it's just not the same mindset. mindset. And then I came during COVID. So I would say... The first year the classes were online Mm -hmm. so there was no real interaction with anybody so Mm -hmm. you learn but there's no one to practice with Mm -hmm. so i would say the language first of all um and then after that excuse me jesus after that i mean my life has been pretty smooth i'm not Mm -hmm. gonna lie Mm -hmm. yes so everything has worked out quite nicely Mm -hmm. because i feel like i'm lucky and the luck for me oh bless you excuse me that was so cute i didn't want to like Okay. <laughs> spread the germs in the world here you know gotta hold it in <laughs> okay no Sorry. that was very classy i like it <laughs> in, the, in the house i'm like ah, okay <laughs> i know people are watching so we have to behave yeah, i guess to be like oh, paris is cute stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> in my house oh. my cat gets scared when i sneeze <laughs> oh my god you know what i don't like cats and dogs and stuff no, why not so i feel like i can't even date someone who has like animals oh why not are you scared because it's like a trauma or scared no, just because you don't just, like that? I just don't like it. I think it's a hustle. I think it's not cute. I think what? it's... And then all the like the hair everywhere. Oh, the hair. Well, you can't tell I have a cat. Well, you... Can you? I don't know. Yeah, but like no, I, I, I make sure I don't look like I have a cat. But once you get one, mm-hmm. you'll probably change your mind. Mm-mm, I will not get one. Really? Even when you were in Central Africa, you didn't have any like animals? I had dogs, but they were outside protecting the house. You know those, uh, those mean, <laughs> those mean yeah, dogs? Yeah, in, in Kenya, we didn't have a house dog. Yeah, we had we, an we outside don't do protect house the house stuff. dog. Yeah, you're <laughs> not inside. Dog on top of that, yeah. The ones that you give your leftover foods. <laughs> <laughs> not no organic food. My cat eats organic food right now. I've heard crazy story of people, like especially women, yeah. like, taking care of their animals, like their babies and stuff. Girl, you talking about me? <laughs> oh my god, you have like the <laughs> little. Oh, I don't do that. Okay, because, I don't. Oh, no, that's just next Listen, level. Listen, I will never get a. Pr- Hold up, mm. I have a bag for her. Does that count? Because no, when, that's you, ha- okay. when you take that's her okay. to the hospital, like, yeah, no, you that's know, okay. Yeah, but I would never like push a pram. I think prams are for babies. I, I will never put like my it pet so in a disturbing. pram. It's it's a little odd. Like I'm just like. Because in Korea, especially because you know how like the birth rate in mm-hmm. Korea is dropping yes. rapidly. Mm-hmm. Um, every time I see a stroller or a pram, um, I look inside expecting a baby. Oh, I don't expect babies anymore. That's it's how it's traumatized I am. Yeah, there's <laughs> a dog inside. Yeah, there's no babies in prams. No, it's a bunch of dogs. In yes. There. Yeah, or even a cat. There's some cats that ride prams here. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm like, first of all, I wish my cat would do that. But <laughs> I would never buy a pram for me. But yeah, yeah, the crazy people you're talking about is me. Okay. You have oh, my mom's sorry. mindset though. Like she's okay. like, I don't understand why people do that. But I also didn't until I got a cat. Mm-hmm. And then you just realize like they're gonna become the center of your life. But what, what would you want you. that? A cat? No, what would you want something to be the center of your life? Oh, I live by myself. It's boring as hell living by I don't know about you, you but girl, it's boring. Oh, I love it. Oh, I'm so bored. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I take her to my friend's house, I literally look at around the house and I'm like, it's so quiet in here. Okay. It's like that. It's just so boring. And on top of that, I grew up with like pets. Mm. Well, not pets. They were outside. But okay. y- you know I, what I mean. I yeah, what even you my mean. cats were outside in Kenya. But I just think it's like 
they're just they give you so much love too mm. like even though cats dogs do too much i'm sorry i'm sorry if you own a dog i'm sorry okay sorry dogs do too much even the whole kissing on the mouth thing i would <gasps> never god forbid <clears throat> i would never do this is this is this is <laughs> unacceptable as a child born in kenya i will never have a dog lick my face this is unacceptable yes and you know i might i have a close friend who has a dog funny enough i just met her today okay and if her dog even goes near my face i'm like uh-uh, back up because oh. i can't I, the whole licking the face thing yeah <laughs> no. i love dogs but i can't no i just imagine like all the germs in your face and i ah, know ah. can you imagine and that's why i don't even want to date a guy with a dog because you, you don't know what he d- yeah oh, can you no, imagine him, see, so bad, seeing him getting licked you don't know what he does with the dog yeah bro like bro do you brush your dog see at least my friend brushes like she's really really like um concentrates of like cleaning her dog okay uh, even then i wouldn't let she's my niece and all but i don't want her kissing my face or anything oh my but God. yeah no so for me that's why i prefer cats because mm-hmm. cats don't need that much love mm-hmm. like she'll come to me when she wants like you know what i mean like okay. she'll come to me but she doesn't need me to be like 24 7 around her she doesn't need me to walk her outside mm. she's just chilling in the house that's all she does okay but it's just nice feeling like you have something have in someone? the house yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm perfectly fine living by myself. This is actually the first time I'm living by myself because yeah. even in America, I was like with my sister and then with my brother. Yeah. So this is my first time to actually be alone yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah. Therefore, I, I don't want any responsibility for now. Okay, that's because it is a huge responsibility. Mm. I feel like some people don't understand how big of a responsibility it is to own an animal because that's okay. until they die. You need to, well, people abandon their pets, which I really, really hate. But if you realistically, if you adopt a cat or a dog, you need to take care of them until they die. But you really, really don't think you would ever, ever get an animal? Yeah, no, I just want kids. What if your kids are like, mom, I want a dog or a cat? Mm-mm. Never? Go, go buy it yourself. What so if they, by that time, he'll be house. like 15 or something. But it's in your house. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I, can, I can take them to places where they can play with animals like cat cafes we're, and we're not having especially if i live in an apartment yeah god forbid i don't because i don't want the girl apartment if you lifestyle. live in korea i'm sorry you're gonna live in an apartment girl i don't even know if i'm gonna stay here that's <laughs> <laughs> so what we all say six years down the line girl i'm still here <laughs> it's like i thought i would live in two years why am i still here <laughs> why are you still here girl while well, i'm working it's because i'm working if okay. i didn't have a job here i would have peace out yeah Okay. years ago yeah okay. but that's why i'm still here but i feel like everybody's always like yeah i don't know if i'll be here for a long time and then 10 years you're like yo i'm still here you know what when i first came yeah. i honestly thought i was going to stay here for the rest of my life that okay. was the plan oh that's yes that's for real for real for real yeah. yes because this whole soul and i thing yeah but then you get older yeah and you realize that hey oh realistic reality. i want relationships like meaningful relationship yeah. i want to get married i want to have kids yeah and when you have that mindset you have to change the way you date mm. you have to change your requirements mm. and then, say it Layla. yes say it. and then yeah. you have to realize that eventually the pool of men available to you would be slashed in it gets really small yeah maybe Very like 90 percent would just be like in the yes. ineligible yes right especially in korea exactly yeah and when you see that obviously you're not going to lower your standard that's not the point Mm -hmm. the point is to just realize that it's going to be a bit more difficult yeah yeah which i don't mind because i I like hard stuff (laughs) i want a challenge you know (laughs) yes so i did the whole like you know you tell your people around you hey i'm looking if you Mm -hmm. know someone who's interested Uh, let's go get thing and stuff like that. exactly so i went that route with friends and colleagues blah 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 and then on apps, you know, I'm using like two apps here and there, yeah. but you have to filter food. You just know it's not <sighs> going to work. The apps are just never going to work. Well, they've worked for some of my friends, I do have to say. But right. So I'm yeah. keeping an open mind. But still, it's starting to get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm up for the challenge. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Dubai oh. in January okay. for a dance festival. Okay. And when I tell you. The men were just uh, the men were menning. Hey. I'm like, why am I in Korea? <laughs> Yo, can we talk about that? Because facts, facts. I feel the same way. Like it's crazy. Because for me, when I leave Korea, I see. Oh, mm. the Koreans are not gonna like this. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. This is not anything we know, like we against you. We love you, y'all, like you. Because yeah. I, I do love Korea. Mm, I don't want to say Korean men. That sounds weird too. But I, I do love. I'ma shut up. Anyways. <laughs> 
I feel like what you said was uh, completely accurate. If you're looking for marriage, I'm going to say as a black girl because that's mm-hmm. what I am. If you're looking for marriage and you're in Korea, your chances are going to be very, very low. Yes. Because a lot of people here want to play around mm-hmm. with you. Um, they want to play with your life. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not willing to put a ring on it. And I'm not willing to play the game. No, no, no. We're I'm not, not playing the anymore. game. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's marriage or nothing for me right now. Me too. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm over it. And it's so easy now. It, and that's the paradox of the whole situation. Yeah. Now that you know what you want and you're so clear, very clear. it's just so easy to be like, no. You can nah. sense the BS coming into Exactly. You. And yeah, you if I see it. a guy and I'm like, this is BS. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm over it. Exactly. Yeah. So when I left, I left um, Korea to go to America and I've left Korea to go to Kenya. Mm-hmm. And I just realized the men in Korea are just... I don't know how to say this without hurting people's feelings. Oh, just what? The men are more, like you said, they're manning. <laughs> <laughs> they're not playing the little games mm-hmm. that are being played here, I feel mm-hmm. like. They're more open. They're more truthful in what they want. Like, I've had a guy come up to me when I went to France, and he was like, oh, I'm not looking for a relationship. I don't even, no, I'm not, sorry. He said, I'm looking for a relationship, but I don't want to get married ever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, thank you for telling me that. Mm -hmm. You're not my cup of tea anymore, but thank you for being straightforward with me. In Korea, you will have people playing a game with you for two years, and then being like, oh, by the way, I don't want to get married. Oh, wow. And you'll be like, but you knew I wanted to get married. So why didn't you tell me that when we first met? You know, oh, it's like shoot. that type of thing. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like people outside of Korea where I've visited, they're more truthful in what they want in the beginning of the relationship. Mm-hmm. But in Korea, they just see your appearance. Oh, they're like, oh, she's a model. Oh, she's this, she's that. And then they date you. And then in the middle of like our dating, they're like, I want a Korean girl. And, and here's the thing. And I'm too. like, I will never be a Korean Because we, bro. yes, we are in a marketplace where we're not the preference. We're not. And, and you know what? And that's a fact. And, and that's okay. Because this is their country. Yes. We're never going to be the preference. So <laughs> we just play our position, right? Yes. I'm you play okay your position. You, yeah. you don't get your feelings hurt. It's yeah. like, I'm not your cup of tea. I'm not your preference. Literally. Yes. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. When we go outside, like when I go to Dubai, all of a sudden, I'm people's preference. Your preference, yeah. Right? You're the preference. And then I see my preference. Yeah. So it's easier to navigate the dating world because you don't have this thing running in the back of your head. Oh, is he interested in me because I'm black? Does he want to just play with me? Or yeah. is it just a game for this Is person? his family yeah. going to be okay? So yeah. we don't have all this thing running through the back of our head, yeah. which makes the dating experience even more fun. Yeah. And then we have access to our preference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the access right? to your preference is really, really big here. Exactly. Yeah, because I, I personally don't feel like I have um, the access to my preference. When I say preference, like, it's just something that we're used to. It doesn't yeah. mean that I have to end up with that. It's just yeah. that based off of my history, this is what I go for. So therefore, this is what I'm going to be interested in yeah. in the first place. But I'm still open to trying something else. Yeah. But then the something else, when you get to a point where you want something serious, obviously you have to be a bit more selective and, and careful. And more strict, yeah. But like, I feel like for me, mm-hmm. I'm not willing to downgrade what I want in a man anymore. I've done it before. Mm-hmm. I've been like, you know what? Oh, he's not Christian, so you know, it's fine. I can make him a Christian once we start oh. dating. And then I take that out. And then uh-huh. I realize, oh, I definitely don't want this. Oh <laughs> and my then I'm God. like, yeah, I'm never taking that out again. Or I'm like, oh, you know, he can be like less financially stable than I am. And mm. then I date him and I'm like, oh, this is a lot. But you know, the good yeah. thing is at least your standards are based off of experience. Oh, 100%. Because when I was younger, no standards. Yeah. No standards at all. Now. So that's a good thing. Yeah, because I've experienced so much, like so many things in my dating world that has made me go, oh, now this is a standard. Mm-hmm. And if you're not the standard, leave me alone. And I don't see you as lower than me, obviously, because I'm not higher than anyone. But it's just like, I just can't see this happening. No, and you're right. We can be friends. I don't even want friends. Because mm. here's the thing. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I, I feel like we're talking I've, about I've like, guys, you know. like, just, okay, what are you looking for? Oh, you know, maybe a, a friendship, and then we'll see where that goes. I'm like, we're not seeing where anything goes. I have enough friends. First of all, I just need Bruh. girl friends. Breath. you know I don't, yeah. I don't need more friends in my life yeah and then this idea of you want to meet someone who wants to be married i'm yeah. not saying married to me yeah i'm just saying that 
at least have that at idea. At least have the idea that this is what you're looking for. So yeah. when you meet a girl, this is the end game that you have in your mind. I yeah. want something serious to get married and have children. Yeah. If it's not there from the get go, mm -hmm. I'm not in the business of convincing you oh, or no. not in the business of like no. trying to mold myself into what I think you are going to look for. I've done enough inner work to just want it yes. to be easy. Do you watch Love is, Love is Blind? I do watch Love is Blind. Okay, so there's an expression one of the girls says, um, fully potenced. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> yeah, so now we're looking for men who are fully, fully potenced. potenched. <laughs> like we're not into potential or thinking, oh, I'm going to try to build you up. That's what AD tried to do with this clear Girl, guy. Girl, oh my God. First and of all, I haven't watched the reunion, so don't say anything about the reunion. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. I've only watched all the episodes, okay. but AD was definitely trying to fix the man. Exactly, yeah. and convince the man, that's the thing. You want to be in a relationship where everyone wants to be together, we want to advance together, but if you're yeah. the one trying to convince the other person, reassure the other person, yeah. hey, I'm worth it, it's going to be okay. It's, gonna be. it's like, oh yeah. She also did say, I see a red flag and I paint my nails red. Yeah, so she did say that. She did. Say yeah, that. we saw that by the end. She did paint her nails red to oh, match the red flag. <laughs> did she? <laughs> For real? She, uh, well, no, not like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, by her, the way she but, moved, yeah. 100%. She painted her nails red to match. Because the first thing the man said on the wedding day when he saw her was, okay, body, not oh, even no. you're beautiful. Like, oh my God, I can see my wife. Yeah. He commented on her body. He did. And I was like, Clay, you let us all down. No, he did. He Honestly, I was, was kind of surprised because to have her be at the altar and, and drop those Ocha. words was very hurtful. Mm -hmm. He could have said it, before. said it before. But I think in his mind, he was like, okay, I'm going to reject her, but I'm still going to date her because she loves me so much. And, and then have you knows. noticed how he's always talking about like what she does? for him and how how she makes him feel it's all mm. about like what she does for me for me yeah. but okay what but what do you for do for her like yeah. how does she make you feel yeah. we don't even know that it's almost like she's the helper trying yeah. to help you be a better man and like she she's said she was a sacrifice yeah exactly. you know what's crazy to me the episode because during when they were living together they barely had any tv time and then when ad met her mom she was talking about how she had prepared this little event for her and clay and he didn't even come home that day mm -hmm. that's when i knew something was up that's mm. when I knew this is not going to work. You prepare this whole extravagant little date for this man and he doesn't even come home? I know. Like, girl, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm working. I have my businesses and stuff. And I mean, and that's okay. But if you love someone, you need to make time for you them. You need to make time. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he loves her body, not so much her. Because her, her body is Her body is beautiful. <laughs> I am no better than a man because every time she was on the screen, I would scream body too. I'd be like, body. Yeah, no, she looks good. She looks really, really her good. Her body is it's giving grown women. That's all it's giving. <laughs> it's giving mm, goals. <laughs> she, she, has a, she is very beautiful. Like this way and inside, I feel like she has such a nice heart. Mm -hmm. But the, that's why when she got played on TV for us, I feel like we all felt hurt. Yes. I feel like we were all like, clay yes uh, and i feel like we can relate to her to some extent happened, because yeah. we've been there before yeah and some of us are still there <laughs> facts uh, <laughs> it's okay so it it, it's hard to <laughs> yeah we we feel it and that's why i'm like yeah. okay we don't want this in our lives anymore like yeah. we need we need to do better we need to do some inner work and yeah and be clear and find fully potential to me yeah i need fully potential that's why i'm like right now i'm at that point where i'm like okay being alone actually Okay. Yeah, I'm not sulking that I don't have a man. I'm chilling. Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm at peace. I'm at peace. Do you feel like you're a relationship girl? Um, I used to be. Okay. I used to, like, I've, I had never been single more than three months, like, back in the day. Oh. Yeah. Like, every three months, I... Not every three months. If I break up, after three months, I'm going to find somebody new. Because it's, it's not easy to find a... It's not hard to find a boyfriend in Korea. Mm-hmm. To find a husband, on the other hand, Ooh, that's child. another story. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna take a long time. Um, so it was really easy for me to be in a relationship, but okay. now that I have <laughs> standards, <laughs> good for you. Good job, Perry. Now that I have standards, I've been single for a very long time, and I'm not. I'm not mad about it. I'm chilling. Okay, now I'm I've been peace. single. I think most of my life, literally, I can count the number of relationships I have on like one hand. On one, well, for me, to one hand actually. Yeah. Yeah. So. But are you at peace with that? Oh, yeah. And that's the, that could also be a problem because I enjoy my singlehood season so much mm. that sometimes I have to remind myself, like, this is not the end goal. Yeah. Like, the goal is not to be alone yeah. and happy and, yeah. and have your life. Mm -hmm. Like, the goal eventually is to have a family. Yeah. So I don't want to be too 
comfortable mm. in my singleness or yeah. singlehood. Yeah. So now, I think since last year, like last summer, I decided, you know what? Try. We, we want husband. Yeah. <laughs> I want a rose band. Yeah, we want um, a husband. Have you ever tr have you ever had that season in your life where you're just like, oh, I just kind of want to, you know, play around? I tried last tried? summer. Oh, you tried? Yeah, I tried, and I did not like it. So that means it's not it's not for yeah, you. Yeah, it's like no, it's not for me. It's not for me either. And it's I'm okay. like, Leila, stop forcing it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not for me. Stop it is forcing so it. Not. Yeah. I love hearing stories from my um, friends who belong in the streets. Mm -hmm. I love when they come back to me and tell me stories. I have tried to be for the streets, mm -hmm. but my body was like, girl, f no. Mm -mm. Yeah, <laughs> my no, body it, it was is, like, it is not the get business. back in the house. Yeah, it's not for me. <laughs> it it <laughs> is not what me. it's uh, made Especially up to be. As a person, this is funny, but it's not funny, actually. Mm. As a person who I can't even fathom kissing somebody in a club. Mm. I can't even fathom kissing somebody who I'm not seeing potential, who's not potential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me say that. So I definitely can't be for the streets. Yeah, Because no. the streets are filthy. Exactly, and you have to go certain places to be for the streets, and those places are not even... They're not for me. They're, they're not for me either. They're I don't like clubbing me. and stuff. Have I you don't even drink much. For so. me, I, yeah, me too. I drink maybe once every three months. Okay. Like, so that's why the streets have called, but I have just not answered, because I'm like... I, I tried to open the door and see, <laughs> She picked up, and she but like, I'm just mm. like, mm -mm, this is not <laughs> for me. Let yeah. me just stay single yeah. and, uh, and not be pressured, because that's the thing too, like when you're a single woman, mm. people ask you, why are you single? Oh it's my like, God. girl, I hate that question. <sighs> what do you want me to tell you? Mm. Like, honestly, I do want someone, but I'm not going to... Just pick anyone. Exactly. Mm. And it's not about having standards, well, it's about having standards, yeah. but it's just, this is a journey, it's yeah. not a sprint. Yeah. So I want to take my time so that when I select a person, I'm happy you with my choice. You stay with them, yeah. And I, I feel like that's one of the problems that are happening in today's society is people are getting married to people that they don't really love. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to ever be me. Me either. Like, if I end up being alone, God forbid. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. Huh? Um, if I end up do being... I do end up being alone. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather be alone than be in a marriage that I'm unhappy with. Yeah, and lonely. Yes, and can you imagine being married to someone and you're lonely in your marriage? I've heard stories. I have, and it's it just scary. sounds like it sucks. Because you're just like, bro, I'm single with a ring on. Yes, and then when you look at those relationships, yeah. you realize that when the woman got into the relationship, she didn't know herself. And that's why, because all my best friends like from back home and stuff are all married with kids and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and I tell them, you know what? I'm like the, the youngest and the one who's like single. Yeah. The one thing that I don't regret is that actually I took the time to get to know myself and mm. to love myself. Yeah. So whoever I pick, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but it's going to be a great relationship. Yeah. And they did not get that chance. Oh. Some of them were with people they met when they were like 17, 18. Oh, you don't know yourself at 17. So they are navigating this relationship yeah. now they are at a stage where they have kids they don't really know who they are and oh they're trying God. to navigate the relationship at the same time so it's very tricky yeah and um and they said yeah you're lucky so good for you so they're like good and bad mm, yeah but um how has your um dating life been in korea you don't have so to go deep into it if you don't i've want been to. on dates so i've, I've dated korean and non-korean mm -hmm. um no potential no no potential <laughs> man there yeah. was always like something well here's the thing mm -hmm. i date during seasons so oh. i go about my life and mm -hmm. then summer came and i go on the app you're, <laughs> you're trying to have a hot girl summer look at you layla so i did that in 2021 yeah. in 2022 and 2023 yeah and then outside of those that window yeah i'm just like a regular person listen doing regular first of stuff. all i think you <laughs> chose the worst season to try and date that's what everybody's I, trying to be for the streets you know what? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like, you know, everybody's like, it's more, the weather is nice and you can go do stuff. You know, it's not that's winter. That's why they're trying to be for the streets. Oh my they're God. They're trying to travel and be for the streets. Maybe that's I feel my like problem. The best dating time, especially when you're on dating apps, is winter. Because oh. people want a cuddle buddy. Like, they're like, oh, I actually want to have a girlfriend because, you know, warm, then we're not. I mean, it's still toxic. We okay. shouldn't have that mentality. But <laughs> I, think, I think it's better than a hot girl summer. So maybe you should try winter next time. Well, I'm currently on the app right now, but mm -hmm. it's a point where I'm not checking in every day. Mm -hmm. So whenever I feel like it, I'll go and look at my match and yeah. see. But the thing is, okay, so I'm using Coffee Meets Bagel. They use it here? Yeah. Oh. It's actually very good. The quality is quite nice. It's better than Tinder, probably. Yeah. I've Tinder never been on that. Oh, will not touch that app with it. I would never yeah. recommend it. Yeah. yeah. No. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. So Coffee Meets Bagel, I feel like the men are 
the prof the profile are very yeah they're well done they're decent yeah yeah they're good try um bumble and hinge i tried bumble but for some reason during summertime people from like outside of korea came ah, and it polluted the whole thing so yeah. i stopped using the app yeah what about I'm hinge like, never tried hinge hinge i had a girl who um was on the show recently and she's using hinge and she said it's pretty decent okay yeah so you should maybe try hinge and i think hinge um if i'm not wrong i've never used hinge because i used to think it was like an american app but apparently people in korea also use it but i used to Oh, sorry. Hinge is apparently a little... They ask more questions and mm. their voice notes are also included. So Ooh. you can hear their voice and all these things. So you might want to try that one. Might be <sighs> yeah. But the thing is, you start talking to people and then you meet them in real life. And it's just like, That's what is I'm just this? Like, I'm not trying. I have a whole podcast that I'm running. I'm fine. Okay. I keep <laughs> myself so busy. Because I'm like, the last thing I want to do is download that app. Because I've been there and I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> So it's tricky, you like, you want to make dating a priority because you want to meet someone, but at the same time, the way to go about dating is so tedious it is. that it's, it's almost like, what it's am so I supposed tedious. to do? What am I going to do? It's, I just feel like it's so much harder these days, too. Exactly. I just want someone to say, hey, Leila. <laughs> when you're walking down There's the this street. guy. Oh, that happened to me twice. Really? In yes, Korea? in Korea. Oh. But nothing came out of, nothing concrete came out of it, but it happened twice, which oh, was surprising. Girl. I've oh. only been approached once. That didn't go anywhere either. The dude was weird as hell. Okay. Um, but I never usually... People think I get approached all the time. No. Mm -hmm. I look mean as hell when I'm walking outside. What has been like your best memory? In Korea? Yeah. In general? Yeah, in general. My best memory? It can be just like leaving America and like trying something new. It can be anything. <laughs> mm hmm. Hmm. I have like favorite moments here and there. Favorite moments is also fine. Like, for example, okay, so Christmas, spending Christmas with friends. Mm -hmm. um, actually, no, I would go with my first moment, mm -hmm. my first favorite moment in Korea, yeah. my birthday. So I arrive in August 2020. My birthday is in December. Yeah. And um, at that time, I had one very good friend yeah. who introduced me to someone else. And then, anyway, long story short, mm -hmm. it was my birthday. They surprised me with a cake. Oh. And then with like gifts and stuff. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And I thought that was very sweet because the thing is, because I'm, I'm always alone and I don't mind being alone. So yeah. I had this whole day planned for myself. Mm, you were so, just going to spend it by yourself. Exactly. So yeah. I did spend the day by myself doing nice stuff and mm -hmm. eating nice food at a nice restaurant yeah. or whatever. And then I get a, a text from like a friend. She's like, hey, where are you? What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm at this location. Oh, I want to meet you at this place. Uh, and I'm like, okay, sure. So yeah. I go and I meet her and she has like all those gifts that she's ah, giving me. So and I'm nice. like, oh my God, this is so nice. And then I go home and then my roommate had like a cake and then another card. And then we had like, like more stuff waiting for me. And I'm like, you guys are so, so cute. Sweet. That is so sweet. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. So yeah, that was yeah. a nice moment. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, listen, it felt like when, home. Yeah. When friends come through for you, would you recommend Korea? Like give, give Korea a rating one to 10. I would give it an eight. Eight is really high, yes. actually. That's actually yes. very, very decent. Oh, yeah. No, I yeah. love my time here in Korea. Yeah. I am very grateful. This was my dream. The dream came true. Mm -hmm. Things happen even, like, way better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I would give it an eight. So, I would say if your dream is to come here, just make sure you have a plan. Okay. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make mm -hmm. sure you save money. Make sure you do your research mm -hmm. and then come with an open mind mm -hmm. and a great attitude mm -hmm. because you know stuff can happen to you it's just the way you see it it's that's going yeah. yeah exactly yeah. that's going to make it uh, good or bad a, a lot better hopefully um save money by the way <laughs> yes save money <laughs> this country is not as cheap as people make it out to be it's expensive out here <laughs> save your before you come here save your money <laughs> and then the korean yeah. ones by the way it's so weak Ugh. have you have you looked at the, the change the, the exchange rate i'm like i'm working hard to earn this money that's worth <clears throat> bro sometimes i like sometimes i put money into my u.s account mm -hmm. and then i see the exchange and i'm like i want to cry <laughs> like that's all i get in usd <laughs> but that's how the exchange rate works if i yeah. transfer one to kenya shillings i'm a happy girl though i'm like oh, whoop, whoop. that is <laughs> I nice. almost double what i'm like exchanging but anyways guys that was it for today's episode thank you so much Layla, for coming through oh thank you for having I me i enjoyed our conversation it was basically about dating and wanting a husband <laughs> <laughs> My husband, if you are there, mm -hmm. hit me up. <laughs> me too. Thank you. But 
you have to be for my standards. I'm not lowering my standards. Be I'm, fully I'm so potential, okay. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be potential or just leave me alone. You know, I'm happy <laughs> and at peace. Leave us alone if you're not potential. Exactly. But anyways, guys, that was it for today's episode. If you are a podcast listener, thank you so much for listening. Make sure you give us five stars. And if you are a YouTube viewer, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell so you can get notifications for when I post. <gasps> Excuse me. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> Bro, that's a mouthful. (laughs) But anyways, guys, that was it for today's episode. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.